Greetings, faithful viewers and Spidey fans alike. It's me, Spider-Man co-creator Stan Lee. Lest we saw a favorite trash can jungle faced off against the metal menace. The Hyper Scan, which unleashed a portal just for the Junko's death, revealing a Spider-Man game for the Hyper Scan. Will Junko make it through this one? Stay tuned and find out. Also, I just want to let you know absolutely nothing happens after you die. It's complete darkness. Suwi Mama, please don't make me go back. Please don't make me go back. I don't want Excelsior! That was the actual Stanley, everybody. It was, it was really him. Now on to more pressing matters. If Hyperscan Tobey Maguire doesn't show up in Spider-Man No Way Home, I'm gonna bite your nose off, Kevin. By 2006, there was no shortage of Spider-Man games you could play. And of course, there was Spider-Man 2, the movie game, which ended up delivering this very engaging and immersive open-world web-slinging experience. And with the trio of 7th gen consoles starting to enter full swing, we were all eager to see what was coming next for Spidey. But let's say you didn't own those consoles, or any normal video game system for that matter. Let's say you had the Mattel Hyperscan a cheap gimmick console from Holiday 2006 where you scan trading cards endlessly just to play these sluggish, broken games. This piece of propaganda tech was meant to teach kids the eventual soul-crushing joys of using the self-checkout line at Walmart. You know, one second you're scanning cards and the next it's, oh wee, is that a whole rotisserie chicken? You're gonna eat that by, you can eat that all by yourself, sign me up. Oh shit, it's the Halo Infinite Double XP Master Chief and Jetta Hot Pocket Booster Pack. <laughs> Hyperscan that shit. Hyperscan Spider-Man the game really makes you feel like you're web swinging with the exaggerated swagger of a scan hyperscan car. With groundbreaking brand new radio frequency identification technology. This is Spider-Man on the Hyperscan. A Spidey game absolutely nobody played. Before you say, but Junko, isn't it a bit disingenuous to say nobody played this? I'm sure somebody must- No! They don't count! They're not people anymore! Nobody would willingly admit to playing this game, but look, faithful viewer, this copy comes with a Toys R Us exclusive card called Uncle Ben Died on the Street Like a Dog. I think what I find so peculiar about this release is it's based on the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films, and it's like, yeah, of course, no duh, but being a big fan of those movies, it's weird to know that there's just this game based off of them that practically nobody has played. Hyperscan Spider-Man specifically is mostly based around Spider-Man 3, as it released a few few months prior to that movie, but it does utilize moments and characters from the first two. Like, remember that scene in Spider-Man 2 where you had to stop Doc Ock from destroying pieces of artwork from a museum? I, I remember. Gameplay-wise, this is... <laughs> This is actually pretty good. The controls are responsive, which is something that's pretty much never associated with Hyperscan. The beat-em-up combat is there, it feels fluid. The web swinging, it, it works. I mean, it's nothing groundbreaking, it's how you'd expect, but you gain altitude pretty easily off your jumps, and <laughs> yeah, this might actually work. I can't, I can't believe it. One thing that really plays to Hyperscan Spider-Man's benefit is the cards feel more practical to use than any other Hyperscan game. You're mostly utilizing modification cards, which give you four different special moves so you can tailor your own playstyle how you see fit, and my god, you only have to scan these cards once! You don't have to do it between every section like in Ben 10 on Hyperscan, can you believe that? Hyperscan Spider-Man was a hero. I just couldn't see it. Who would have thought the gameplay would be more fun and digestible without having to constantly bolt towards the hyperscan and scan a stupid card every 10 seconds? The Daddy Long Legs card is freaking OP. You'll just kick everyone around you. One special move will just yoink enemies, and there's one that makes Spider Man hail down pellets of his own web chism all over New York, which immediately, of course, I have to accept as canon. Spider Man co creator Stan Lee here. That's right, folks. Would chism is canon? Now, I did what you asked. Now, please just let me stay. I want to taste the rain, feel the grass in my fingers. I want to, I want to. I miss my grandchildren. I just want to be with them one last time. These nighttime streets act as your hub world that you're free to roam around in and beat up some baddies here and there. It's a nice touch. A lot of these levels, you'll be pummeling bad guys, chasing after vehicles, and the greatest responsibility of all, delivering pizzas. Now, Peter. These are the times when a young man becomes who he's gonna be for the rest of his life. There's gonna be choices you're gonna have to make, hard choices. But I know deep down you'll do the right thing. Okay, Spidey, let's think this through. Julie store robbery or pizza time? Julie store robbery or pizza time? Peter, come on. Peter, can you hear me? Peter, Peter, hear me? Pizza time. 
<laughs> so yeah, Hyperscan Spider-Man has some pretty good stuff going for it. That's not to say everything's smooth about this game. The combat works fine on foot, but a lot of the early levels have you fighting Green Goblin mid-air, which is pretty awkward because only your special attacks will work mid-jump. And then I'll save Mary Jane and she's just stuck in this frozen position the game keeps telling me to drop down and die. What do you want me to do? You want me to drop her? Okay! Obviously, Spider-Man can also web crawl on buildings, which you do by pressing up, but it's pretty inconsistent. And because the backgrounds are so flat, it's very hard to determine what hyperscan Toby will stick to. Early on, you have this inflamed Zeppelin level where you gotta save these civilians one at a time, but they just won't shut up. Thank you. Help! 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 That's enough! The people of New York can all die! The biggest gut punch of this game happens to be the hyperscan itself. Yes, it was a little too good to be true, but some of the levels are locked away unless you have a certain card, because of course they are. This level can only be unlocked by scanning the Big Apple 2 mod card. And this isn't just like one or two levels, there's a good chunk of them that you can't play, and the game's just like, I missed the part where that's my problem. For a plug and play type Spider Man game, this is pretty decent, but not enough to make me want to go out and buy more cards just to maybe play one more level where hooray! I unlocked another level where you get to save a bunch of civilians on this building. Uh, this level, uh, looks kind of familiar. But you know what? At the end of the day, I still can't believe it. I, I actually had a good time with Hyperscan Spidey. It just sucks that intrinsically, because of what the Hyperscan is, a decent game is tainted with all these annoyances. This is hands down the best Hyperscan game there is. It's, it's not even close. That might not be a high bar, but I can see if this were the game that came bundled with my Hyperscan at launch, I probably wouldn't have had the disdain for it that I do. The only other Hyperscan game we haven't talked about yet is Marvel Heroes, another Marvel-based Hyperscan title that I doubt anybody played. This one acts more as a straightforward side-scrolling beat-em-up with a wide array of Marvel characters at your disposal, depending on what cards you have, of course. Again, like Spider-Man, all the card scanning is kept to a minimum here, which is a huge plus. And you know what? This one's also not half bad. What's really cool is you can tell work went into making every character play pretty distinct with their different move sets. Like Iron Man can fly around freely and he has this flashy crowd control move with a ton of missiles. Thor will fly up and come crashing down. The Thing can grab and clobber enemies. And the animations are pretty flashy and the controls are really responsive here too. It's a rather non-offensive beat-em-up game and if you're a fan of Marvel, these card designs are pretty well done. And honestly, it was pretty neat to see how each one would translate in-game. Each level kind of operates the same. You fight through three stages with three boss fights for each hero, and that's where the villain cards come in. You basically just use these to tailor what three bosses you'll fight per level. So say if you want to include a Venom boss fight in your next run through, you can do that. <laughs> Venom. It just doesn't really add much beyond, oh hey look, there's that character, let's go kick his ass. Every level here pretty much does feel the same, so after the novelty of trying out different heroes wears off, everything becomes stale pretty fast, as there's really not much here to mix things up. You do have a few story missions if you have the right story cards, but again, they're pretty much all the same. You get a few bland comic panels and then you're just side-scrolling through more waves of enemies and repetitive stages, but hey, it works. It's a functional, responsive game with some charm to it if you're a Marvel fan. So there you have it. Thanks to Marvel, two of the five hyperscan games that exist are decent enough. And most of that just comes from the fact that the card swiping isn't obnoxious and the controls actually function, thank god. But really think about it, in 2006 or early 2007, the Hyperscan would cost you $70. For that same price, you could have definitely secured a GameCube or a Game Boy Advance and probably a copy of Spider-Man 2, Ultimate Spider-Man, or Ultimate Alliance for around that price. Or for like just $20, you could have just got a plug-and-play Spider-Man. Because that's really what the Hyperscan was. It was a way to mark up a plug-and-play toy under the guise of what could be an ongoing supported console with trading cards for extra revenue. The thing is, most of us weren't that gullible. Most of us, that is, anyway. See, with great failure comes great depression, but hopefully one day I'll forget I was ever even happy to begin with. For now, I think I'll just enjoy some peace and quiet. That's what this was all about. A stupid video game. You stupid little trash can. I ought to rip out that pathetic stock photo you got for it. Hey, boy, you miserable. Peace and peace.